Welcome back to Radio Entrepreneurs. My name is Jeffrey Davis, and I'm the host of Radio Entrepreneurs. And we like to present a regular segment with the law firm of Tarla Breed Hart and Rogers and Mark Furman, shareholder, entrepreneurship and the law. And, uh, my, and Mark Furman is my guest host today. Welcome back, Mark. Hi, Jeffrey. Nice to be with you. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm not going to be, I'll be introducing to our audience, but not to you, Mark, someone that you know, Alan McLean, McLean Employment Law. Welcome, Alan. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Thanks Hi, so Alan. Much. Hi, Mark. Alan, why don't you tell us first about your practice so we have an understanding of that in a context? Yeah, sure. So I'm an employment lawyer. Um, I represent both um, in the employees or individuals as well as employers. And so that's a little unique about my practice. Most employment attorneys either represent one side or the other. Um, but I um, am a generalist within employment law. At least that's how I think of myself. Um, so I'll help um, clients with um, unpaid wages issues, uh, non-compete issues. I help employers put in policies. Uh, I provide day-to-day -day counseling. And I also litigate related claims. So what are... Um... What are the biggest traps uh, that you see in your practice for employers? Sure, um, I see a number of traps, but one I see often um, is employers getting caught up um, un under the unpaid wages statute in Massachusetts. And as you, I know, Mark, uh, you realize, but that statute's very onerous in terms of the penalties for employers in the, in the circumstance where they may miss a payment that's due to an employee. The law mandates that is three times that the employer has to pay in that circumstance. And so employers can get caught up, whether it's a commission payment that's passed due. Um, may, they may not realize regarding the timing of payments. Um, they have to be paid within a certain period of time. And then another issue I see a lot of times is payment of vacation time, earned vacation time at the end of employment. That's one where employers often get tripped up. And unfortunately, they get caught up in that really strict mandated penalty. I can see where that could be uh, kind of messy, especially with uh, people working a combination of home office. And I think a lot of people are not recording tightly people's schedules. And so you get human resources or operating officers or CFOs somewhat in conflict with ex-employees on what were the dates you were really away. It's an easy cord to trip. Would you agree? Oh, yeah, definitely. And that's a, a that overlaps with another issue, the remote employee issue, which has, in addition to the vacation pay and the, the paid time off, there's this other issue is where's your employee working? What policies or laws actually apply to that employee now if they are no longer working in the office and they're working out of state somewhere? Um, so, yeah, absolutely. I see employees getting tripped up with that, but, you know, unfortunately, more frequent, frequently than I would like to see. And, and there's not much recourse available to them. Um, under the law anyway. So let's say uh, an employer learns of some conduct by the employee that makes them very happy, unhappy, I should say. Mm -hmm. And they say, you're fired. Leave now. Um, so where are they? Uh, and they're upset at what they learn. So where are they on the wage act uh, when they say, uh, you know, don't let the door hit you on the way out? Yeah. So that, that's where that's exactly where the problem arises, because it makes sense to me that, you know, someone's doing something really bad and employees doing something really bad. You should be able to let go of that person right away. I mean, they could literally, literally be stealing from you, from the company. Um, but the better course under the current state of the law is to suspend that person, put them on a, a, a leave of some kind, because if they're involuntarily let go, then you have to pay them all of their earned wages on that same day that they're not the go. day after. Not the, the day after. Day. Once you once you trip that wire, it's too late, and so you got to pay them all their earned pay. So if they're if they're normally paid on Friday, say, and they work till Wednesday, you got to pay them Monday through Wednesday. And you got to pay them that unearned va that sorry that earned vacation time up through that same date on that same day. So essentially, you have to have the check ready to hand them on the way out uh, the door. So I'm going to talk as a 
serial entrepreneur and a management consultant because I've worn those hats most of my life. Yeah. Oh my, what a problem for me as an employer, as a management consultant, because if I have an employee that really is screwing up, if I can say it that way, mm -hmm. to the point that I have to tell them, get out today. And I don't have an HR director or I have a CFO or someone who's running my finances. They're usually going to say to me, and I'm saying in a, in a lot of things, I will pay them in full in the next payroll. And you're saying, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, it doesn't go to next payroll because people want to keep it on the cycle, right? But, and so yeah. this is where that court, if I get that angry, I've got to first go to my people internally and say, have the check ready today before I throw them out. Yeah, the you, you got to plan ahead, which is why, you know, in that sort of emergency circumstance, you, you got to place someone on leave because you haven't planned for that event, right? Um, and so you can get prepared to pay them on that same day. Like you're saying, Jeffrey, have that meeting, get the check ready to go and then pay the person. But first put them on leave and then fire them so that you can keep them on the cycle. Yes. Yeah, that's right. But it's leave without pay. I have to clarify now. I'm an um, entrepreneur. <laughs> it probably, I, I mean, I guess I should clarify that it does probably depend on the circumstances, but in most circumstances, I think you probably can put someone on leave without pay. Um, you'd want to... My suggestion would be to contact an attorney, of course, to review that particular circumstance, or if you have an experienced HR person, take a look at that. But um, you, you may be able to put someone on leave without <laughs> that time. You know, if you have a highly compensated person and you're talking about mandatory three times the pay uh, plus mandatory attorney's fees, I mean, it's just a short a short leave to be able to get your act together makes a lot of sense. But, you know, it's the classic example of uh, traps for the unwary business owner w when you're dealing with legal issues. There's so many of them. And the employment world is a, is a hotbed of them. Well, I understand the emotions of entrepreneurs since I'm usually uh the uh, Petri dish for their feelings. And, uh, but I would say to you, Alan, how, what if you're firing a shareholder? Does that even become even that much more important not to just walk in? You have a shareholder who's not been playing properly with the deck of cards. It's not unusual for someone to walk in and fire a shareholder. Uh, does it become even much more complicated in those situations? I think it does get more, more complicated. Now, one, I would probably put a call in to Mark for help with the shareholder issues, because that's I, I consider that sort of a, a Mark, I should say, I consider the go to person on that. But if that person's an employee in addition to a shareholder, then the employment laws definitely apply to that person. And so they could still have an unpaid wages claim or any other employment related claim. So you still want to act carefully with respect to the employment laws with that shareholder. And they may have employment rights they may not be at will employees by virtue of being a shareholder based upon the the understandings uh, of the parties you know a lot of times uh employment is the only benefit in the short term that people get from owning uh owning interest in an llc or a corporation um so, yeah, that's definitely uh, an area that people can get caught up in. Mark, do you have a follow-up question? Yeah, just uh, one more example of a of a trap. Um, how about sure. in? Go ahead. Oh, well, the thought that came to mind when you asked that anyway, Mark, was the non-competes. I do a lot of work with employers on non-compete agreements, um, preparing them and, and more often counseling them. Hey, I have an employee that just left. Do I have an enforceable non-compete? And I work with them, individuals that have left employers as well. So I, I see both sides. Um, but in Massachusetts, the, the law is very specific surrounding non-competes. About five years ago now, they changed the law. And, you know, one, a non-compete can only be limited to one year. It can only apply to certain types of employees. Not It cannot apply to a non-exempt employee. 
Um, and this is for agreements signed after October 2018. And so a lot of employers don't realize this. They haven't reached out to me or someone like myself to help them put together the non-compete. And they're using an old non-compete agreement that doesn't comply with the new law. And so someone's come and gone and they may not have an effective non-compete anymore. And they may not be able to stop that employee from working for a competitor. Interesting. Um, I asked Mark for the follow-up question because that that whole employment shareholder thing gets me all worked up and I didn't want to uh, <laughs> take control of the interview. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I do have uh, one other question. Um, Alan, uh, the role of insurance when it comes to employment claims, uh, you know, which in your experience, do you see uh, most, some, or hardly any employers having uh, employment practices insurance? Um, I'm seeing a growing amount of employers with employment practices liability insurance. And I generally think it's a good idea to have that insurance. Um, as any business owner will find out in time, unfortunately, something is going to happen, particularly if you're a growing business where an employee or former employee will will bring some sort of issue to the front, whether it's a formal claim or a threat of a claim. And you, you're gonna wanna have that coverage um, because it, it can be very expensive to litigate an employment dispute. Any legal dispute is of course expensive. Um, and if you have that protection, that can be just extremely helpful for an employer. Um, and, and the cost, as I understand it, I'm not an insurance broker, um, but the cost to get that insurance typically isn't prohibitive. And so it does make sense, I think, from a business perspective to have that insurance and have that protection. And, and that is one of the insurance policies that can still be shopped around competitively, uh, which is nice to know. Uh, you know, Alan, I have to tell you, having you on with Mark Furman for me is a pleasure. Uh, I like listening to two attorneys talk to each other, especially when I'm not paying for both of you. Uh, <laughs> But if somebody were looking for you and wanted to know more about you and your employment law and what you do, and we hope you come back again with Mark, how would we find you? Uh, probably my website's the best spot, uh, www.mcleanemploymentlaw.com. Great. That's pretty easy. Mark Furman, someone's looking for you. How do we find you? Uh, email is probably best, M Furman, F-U-R-M-A-N, at T B H R dash law.com you know i'll just tell both of you that i probably don't go a week without saying to clients i gotta remind you again i'm not an attorney <laughs> i'm a management consultant <laughs> don't ask me that question so that happens a lot more frequently i really appreciate both of you being on the show today i hope you both come back and together and remind everybody this is radio entrepreneurs <laughs>